Okay, here we go again, another 3D modeling tutorial in Maya. And as you can see right here, we have designed a, uh, or modeled out, a wine glass. So, and this is all just from NURBS Curve, so that's pretty much all I did to make this. I didn't have to do very much work in order to achieve something like this. And what I did on the side here is made this into a polygon um, formatted wine glass. This is all NURBS Curve, so I wouldn't be able to do much in the way of you know, simple fixing or tweaking as I would get in simple polygon tool, in the simple polygon uh, menu. So anyway, this is pretty easy to do and I gotta say I really like the results. So without further ado, let's see if we can try to duplicate this in a really nice fashion. Okay, so let's uh, create a new scene. All right, drag out a plane. So just kind of just drag it in the middle here. Five for shaded. We'll assign a new material. We'll go with a Lambert. Wine, glass, ref. Make sure you get in the habit of referencing your um, photographs and all of your materials. So let me just find this wine glass here. Uh, no. There it is. Okay. There we go. Okay, so once you have that. Now you just have to go into your materials. Um, doesn't seem to appear anywhere. I'm not sure why. It's not appearing in the in the in the th shader here. I'm not sure. All right. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, so I guess it was just hiding from us. There we go. So now let's see if this works. There we go. Okay, so we have ourselves our our reference photo. And now we can just go and take that out, go into our uh, top view, or if we want, we can raise this up in our, um, we can raise this up to 90 degrees so we can see it through the front. Makes it a little bit easier, and that looks pretty good. If we want, we could probably scale this just a little bit. That's it. And that's, I think that looks, I think that works. So I think we are going to go with that. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is, in order to create this, we're going to use a special tool called the Cur CB CV Curve Tool. And it's pretty easy to use. It's not that difficult. All we're going to do is we're going to just make the curve all around this wine glass. So we're just going to start from the bottom and we're going to go all the way around this wine glass until we get a good portion of it. So, all right, so we're just going to click here and we're just going to go all around very, very carefully, and see if you can get as close to the reference as possible. And then we can go in and make some tweaks in it later. So you know, do not uh, worry if you mess one little part up. And I'm going to take my time with this as well. So make sure you have a high quality res photo here because you know you wouldn't want to. Uh, mess up on the reference and then having to do it all again. So, okay, so now I guess maybe to make things a little easier if you want, you could snap to grid, but only dip problem is if it's not within the line, if the picture is not lined up with the grid itself, it's not going to serve you to any benefit. So, but for now, I think I'll just stick with this since it seems to be working fairly well. So yeah, just follow the, the curve of the wine glass as close to the reference as possible. So, and um, you know, you can always tweak it later. So if you want, if you want too far, you can go like this. If you want to go back, you can do a control Z. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. I think I went a little too far on that part. So I think I'll just keep on going. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to go too far. There we go. So. And then once you, if you if you really do this carefully and um, you know take your time on it, you'll you'll achieve a really nice result in the long run. So I guess patience will serve you best here. As for I don't really have any myself because you know I always want to uh, you know get to the um, bottom of it. Yeah, see so you can tell already that I'm not doing a very good job because I'm kind of rushing to get it done. So. You know, little stri little hits right there. All right, so once you get to, I guess, 
the bottom or the top part of here. This is where we're going to go downward, and you'll see why we do this. So um, before I do, let me just fix that curve right there. Okay. Okay, and then same thing. Just keep on going down, down the, the wine glass. So you're going on the inner side of it. So, and then just keep going. You know, making simple um, lines. If you want, you can tweak them. Like if I went out here, I can always tweak it out to let's say here. So, and just keep on going until you have like a nice outline of it. So keep on going. It's a little tedious, but hey, you know, if you want something like this to work out for you, you definitely want to take your time with it. So, okay, so we are getting close to the end. So now we're going to just go a little bit farther down to about here. And I think we will call it that. Okay, so we have our curve set, and now we're going to go select our curve. So now we just have to make sure we have this selected. Um, open and close curve tool. Making sure if I can see if I can get in here. I don't know if it's not letting me for some reason. Okay, here we go to CV. So basically, you have to hold in control and get it. So let me just fix that up. Okay, so you can just select each curve and just move it in. So kind of analyze your uh, wine glass here, making sure everything's set. It's a little a little rough down here. I can probably just tweak that a bit. Bring this in a, just a little bit, not much. And all you have to do is go in, make sure you have everything all set. So. There we go, that's pretty good. All right. Go on here, make some tweaks. If this is like just, this is only because I want to obtain at least a really nice looking wine glass here, so I don't want it to be very bad. Okay, so once you have that set, you can exit out of that, and then you can go back to your front view you can get rid of the picture, and then you can see that you have a really nice outline of the wine glass. So you're going to select the wine glass, make sure you're in your surfaces menu, and then you're going to surfaces revolve. Okay, and make sure you have pretty much your, you just, I don't know, if you want to project it, let's say we're projecting this through this is the Y axis, so I'm not sure, so let's see if we can revolve it now. And there we go, so we got something like that. Pretty, pretty nice, I gotta say. So we'll just kind of drag that to the side here. And now you have yourself a really elegant looking wine glass. So when you go into your revolve settings, make sure you have the access preset to exactly how you want it. Because if you were to do something like, let's say for an example, we were to select the Z, you know, you'd get something like this. Or let's say for an example, you're in the X axis, but you projecting it, that you'll get something like this, and then it's going to look kind of weird. I mean, this kind of looks interesting. I'm not really sure. I mean, this looks really weird, but it looks like uh, a lid to a, to a pan or something, so we'll just get rid of that. But anyway, that's pretty much it for that wine glass. So now we have achieved something really nice, and if you want to, you know, make some adjustments to it as far as, you know, averaging the verts out, all you can do is go to Modify, Convert, Nerves to Polygons. Um, and then what's stupid is your gizmo will end up all the way over here. So just do a central pivot or go to Modify, Central Pivot, and there you go. Okay, so now we have our wine glass in polygon format. However, it looks a little weird. I mean, look at all these weird lines. So we'll have to go into our settings again. Again and make some adjustments in order to obtain that. Okay, so I figured out a way I could um, convert this over to Polygon. So convert NURBS to Polygon. And then for the settings, I put into quads and then count. 
Um, I'm not sure what standard fit does. I mean, we could see what it does. Um, it does an okay job. However, it creates a lot of extra faces that we don't... I'm not sure why Maya does, but it just, for some inexplicable reason, it, it just creates a, a more faces than we need. And uh, it doesn't look very good. So, so probably not go with that method. Um, so let's go back um, to convert it. Let's do uh, quads and cow and see if that works. And there we go. So that looks a lot better. Um, obviously, we need to put... I don't know why the gizmo is way over there, which is stupid for Maya to do. So just do a central pivot. And then it goes back, which is modify central pivot. Um, now, you can tell that... like Look at all these faces now. It's all black in some areas. Uh, there's a way to fix that, um, surprisingly. All you have to do is go to polygon your, your polygon menu normal set to face and there you go so now everything's all set and done here let's um, show you what happened for some weird reason um, for some weird reason it sets all the faces back into each other and so here's what happens when that does let's go to display nerves uh, normals so now we have all these uh, faces here but for some reason they're all going inward instead of outward so by doing a set to face now it looks a little better so okay so we'll just turn that off so nerves normals okay and then um, you know that obviously it's on a hard shaded mode if you want you can go to a shaded and it looks a little better but I don't know for some reason though it just you know the thing looks here looks really really tight in so if we wanted to we could go in and, and just model this ourselves because this really is not hard to make so yeah what's really weird about Maya's uh, you know converting to let's say something else like this yeah it, it creates an entire new row of faces which is very uh, bizarre for me which is very strange I don't know why it does that so um, there we go oops I deleted an extra face Okay, so we'll delete those. And then let's see. Oh boy, I deleted way more than I should have. Okay. Alright, now let's go back in here. Okay, delete those, delete that. Oops. Oops. Trying to tweak this out here. Delete, 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 delete. So now we're just deleting all these extra faces that we don't really need, which Maya, for some reason, created. I don't know. It's probably just for the fact that we ended up doing that method. So let's see. Okay. Delete, delete. Delete, 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 delete. Okay. So now it's a little bit better. So now we don't have all these uh, weird, f you know, faces in here. So. Okay, before I do, I'm going to go into my script editor. And just clear all. So then mine runs a little faster. And then what I'll do is I will clear history on the object. So now it won't run as weird. Or now it won't lag because Maya has a tendency to do that. So now we'll fill this hole up. And now we're going to basically, in fact, what we could probably do is delete that entire thing right here. Because I don't think we're, I don't think we're gonna need it. <laughs> Face, delete, there we go. Okay, so now we have something like this, which looks a lot better than what we had initially. Now we're going to basically just extrude this face downward. So we'll just kind of match it up with the reference here. So about to uh, that line where it's at. So about right there is where 
it meets and then we're going to do another extrude and we're going to basically just pull this out outward like that and there you go so maybe a little bit smaller it's pretty good okay and then for the verts here we are going to pull these up so let me just see if I can select all these. Make sure I haven't selected anything else. There we go. And then we're going to pull this up. Oops. About right there. So. All right. Let's see. Um. Oh. Okay. That's probably why. Um. We have to add in some. Um. Edge loops because when we go to smooth it, look how much we lose. I mean, we lose that much without any edge loops. So let's just delete the history and then we'll add in some edge loops. So it's pretty good. And then we'll go in and do the same here. Add in some more edge loops so we don't lose that shape. And there we go. So a lot better than we had initially. So, you know, you can go ahead and experiment with exactly, you know, with edge loops. And you can go ahead and maybe try to do something a little bit differently with the curves. Um, obviously, I just went with something simple like a wine glass. So, but yeah, that's pretty much the basis for it. I mean, even the bottom could use some work as well. I mean, we could obviously put in some you know we could probably put in some edge loops here as well or not use our interactive split tool and then just create some lines down here sometimes the the split tool doesn't work to your benefit because it always just wants to do its own thing so something like that well I don't know it doesn't really do it justice so maybe I'll just get rid of it for now so, yeah, because I guess with the edge loops, it prevents it from having that circular format of the base of the wine glass and whatnot. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you don't want to do a smooth, you can always go ahead and, let's see, you can always do a soften edge, which still doesn't do it justice, but, you know. When you get this black stuff, when you get the black um, faces, just always set it to face, and then you'll get rid of it for, for you. So, so there's pretty much a smoother wine glass, and it looks a lot better. I mean, we can even probably make this a little bit bigger. So, but yeah, that's there's your typical wine glass, and there you go of how to model it out. So, all right, well, that's going to, I guess, conclude part one of the modeling of the wine glass. I think for the next video, I'm going to actually show you how we can probably make this into a transparent looking um, material, and then we can make it actually look like a glass in general. So.